Hi! In this video, we'll be making an etching and marking machine for etching and marking knives. Shing! I want to be able to put a maker's mark on my knives. There are different ways to do that, but I want to use etching. So, what is etching and how does it make me a maker's mark? Let me quickly explain. Etching, in simple terms, is the process of corroding metal. This can be done using chemical acids or using electricity together with an electrolyte. I want to use electricity with an electrolyte. This is also called electro etching. The way this works is as follows. A power source is connected with the positive pole to the metal that needs to be etched and with the negative pole to a piece of cotton or felt dipped in salty water. When you connect the two, the salty water acts as an electrolyte, thus closing the circuit. This allows a current to flow. This current going through the salty water corrodes the metal surface you want to etch. So, sounds simple right? We can use a stencil to expose the metal we want to etch, connect it to a 9 volt battery using some salty water, and bada bam, bada boom, maker's mark. Well, yes and no. DC current only etches away the material, it doesn't leave a clear black mark. However, AC current does leave a black mark, but it doesn't etch away material. Conclusion is, we need both DC and AC current to etch and blacken the maker's mark. And that is where this project comes in. We are going to make a power supply outputting 12 volts DC and 12 volts AC. So, I started off with an old 12 volt DC adapter. It needs to be an old boy, as old adapters contain a big transformer. You can get them at thrift shops, just make sure it's heavy and cube shaped. This adapter already gives us the DC current. To get the AC current, we must open up the adapter. It contains a transformer that we talked about and a little circuit behind it. The transformer only lowers the mains voltage, that is 230 volts AC, to the 12 volts also AC. The little circuit behind it converts the AC current to DC current, giving us the final 12 volts DC. In theory, we can just connect an extra output just before the converting circuit, which will give us a 12 volts AC output. And that is also exactly what we are going to do. Let me draw up a little diagram. So, this is the complete circuit. This is the adapter we just saw. To make a functional machine that outputs AC and DC, we just add a connection before the converting circuit, as we just discussed. Then, we simply run the added AC output and the already existing DC output into a switch. This switch allows us to choose either AC or DC on the same output wires. Now, this is basically the whole circuit, but I wanted to add a fan. Transformers can get a little bit toasty, especially when you're basically shortcutting the circuit. The fan hopefully helps to cool the transformer. I didn't want to put the fan on the same output as the etching output, so I added another adapter to the mains voltage. This runs into a 12 volts DC fan, which will cool the transformer. This adapter happened to have an LED light. I could use that as an indicator light for when the machine was running. So let's start off with connecting the fan and its adapter. Although I hate soldering, this part of the circuit works. The fan spins and the DC output also still works. However, it turns out to be a little over 12 volts. Luckily, that's not a problem. I lengthened the DC output and then added the AC output coming directly from the transformer's output.
I put the final output wires on the switch and connected it both to the AC and DC output. Now, I tested this circuit off camera and I shorted the circuit. You can see the marks from the pins of the fan adapter. Luckily, that's also the only thing that broke. So, I quickly replaced the fan's adapter. Only this time, unfortunately, it had no indicator light. This time, I made sure that the pins couldn't possibly connect to the metal casing of the transformer. When everything was finally in place and not shortcutting, it was time to test the full circuit. So, the fan turns on. When the switch is in middle position, the output is zero. Switching it to the AC mode gives us 12 volts AC. Then switching it to DC mode gives us 15 volts DC. Everything seems to work, so let's hide it away in a box. I designed this little box and a friend of mine printed it as his printer is better and bigger than my printer. The result is great, however, I did make a little mistake while designing the box. Yeah, um, we're not gonna talk about that. The power cord had to be cut to fit through the hole in the box. I shoved the cable through the box and resoldered the wire. I aligned everything to be fixed in place, adding a layer between the adapters so they wouldn't short again. The banana plug connectors were soldered to the right wire. The components were also fixed with a little glue. The fan was glued in place. And finally, the switch and the connectors were screwed in place. Then I screwed on the lid and the whole machine was finished. Connecting it once again to the voltmeter, we can see both DC and AC work. For the actual etching, I quickly made a cathode. This is purely to hold the piece of cotton in place. Also, during etching, the negative pole might get damaged by the process. Now, I don't want to ruin my alligator clip, so this is basically an extension which will be damaged instead. It consists of a piece of aluminum channel, a chunk of wood and a copper wire. I tinned the copper wire so it wouldn't fray while connecting the alligator clip to it. Then, it was finally time for testing. First of all, I tested it on this piece of saw blade. I did a test with only DC, another one with only AC, and a third one with both combined. You can clearly see the different results here. Then I tested it on my next knife, again with the three different tests. The results are not the same on each type of steel, but I think it'll do for my knives. Now, let's finally create a maker's mark.
After a little bit of sanding, the logo looks pretty good. Eventually though, I did sand a little bit of the blackness away, so I should be more careful next time. But overall, I am very happy with this outcome. So there you have it, an etching and marking machine from some cheap electronics. I think in total this project cost about 15 euros. That's pretty good considering the price of commercial etch and mark machines. Of course it might not be the best quality, but I'm happy. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below and I'll see you all next time, when I'll finish this knife I just showed you. Bye.